recently we've been talking about koans, specifically from Dogen's collection. This is it's called the Shinji Shobogenzo or the Mana Shobogenzo. It's 301 koans. And I want to talk about one today that I I, I love uh, for what it's saying and also because for whatever reason, I find it very kind. So I'll read it to you and then I'll, I'll say more. Once a monastic asked Ching Yuan, what is the meaning of bodhidharmas coming from India? Ching Yuan said, it's just like this. The monastic asked further, what do you have to teach these days? Ching Yuan said, come closer. The monastic moved closer. And Ching Yuan said, keep this in mind. That's it. This starts out very familiar, this question. The, the monk, and by the way, I, I want to acknowledge, usually these end with the monastic realizing full and perfect enlightenment. Nothing. We don't know. We don't know if this helped this, this monk at all. Did the monk hear it? Did the monk see it? It's lost to history. But it starts with this question that has been asked before. It's not just his question. What is the meaning of Bodhidharma's coming from India? This is a famous question, most often cited in a different koan, in which the response is something like the oak tree in the garden. I think it's, it's my understanding that when we hear these questions repeated, we understand that they were part of a culture, a part of a kind of testing culture, you know. Maybe this monk knew what someone else's answer was to this question. So he's going to try this question on this teacher, see what he gets. So what is the meaning of Bodhidharma's coming from India? And Ching Yuan said, it's just like this. On the surface, it's a really weird exchange. In the same way that the oak tree in the garden is a strange kind of response. But in this tradition, in these dialogues, it's not so weird. The monk is asking a question and that question is about why. Why did Bodhidharma come from the West? And within that question of why is a much bigger question. What does all this mean? What's the point? Why are we doing this? And I think today I was drawn to this koan because I'm noticing in so many of the conversations that I'm having recently that people are People want to know why. A client will come with addiction or with anxiety or with some sort of behavior that they want to change. And I'll say, why do you want to do therapy? And they'll say, because I want to know why I do it. Or I want to know why I feel this way. And so I'll ask, what will change for you if you know why? And someone said to me just yesterday, they said, if I know why, I think I can let it go. It's really interesting. I think we're all taught to value the why.
we're told in lots of different ways that if we understand that, then we understand the big thing. The big thing is the why. The big thing is the meaning. So we start there. And Qing Yuan says, it's just like this. And of course, this comes down to us in text. So we don't get to see what he does, but it doesn't matter. He could say, it's just like this. Or he could say, it's just like this. Or he could say, it's just like this. Or he could point to the monk and he could say, it's just like this. They're all the right answer. They're all this. And just like the oak tree in the garden, what's happening is someone is saying, why? And the teacher is saying, no, what? We imagine, and I'm including me, that we come to a practice like this and that it makes our view wider. And if our view is wider, we get to see the big picture, we get to see the big thing. And so the longer we sit, the longer we practice, it's like we're sitting on the mountain and we're looking out over the valley, or we're sitting on a cliff and we're looking out over the full expanse of the ocean. We're lying on our back and we're looking up and we're seeing the whole sky. If we see everything at once, then we'll get it. This monk is asking, how do I know the big thing? And the teacher says, it's just like this. This. And then the monk asks the second question and he says, what do you have to teach these days? Which is a little, maybe a little insulting because he, he was just taught something, but I don't think he noticed. And Xin Yuan says, come closer. And the monk comes closer. And Xin Yuan says, keep this in mind. Keep this in mind is the same this. It's the this of it's just like this. He could have said, come closer. It's just like this. When we search for the why, when we search for the big story, when we search for the answer, when we pull back and try to see the panoramic view, there's a distancing that we're doing. It feels so profound. It feels so spacious that we might not notice that it brings with it a separation. It requires us to sit on that cliff and look out. It requires us to sit on that mountaintop and look out so that we're here and the thing that we're looking at, the thing that we're understanding, the thing that we're finally taking in in all of its depth and meaning is out there. Now in other koans, there's al there are almost identical exchanges that aren't so kind, the teacher slaps the student, stomps on their foot, 
And that's their way of saying, it's just like this. Chinyua is so gentle. He takes this question and he knows what this question is. He's heard this question. He knows what the monk is doing. He knows the test. And instead of making this dramatic gesture, he takes it so seriously and he says, it's here. No, 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 it's here. And the monk asks, what are you even teaching? And he brings him even closer and he says, it's here. And in that way, he goes a step beyond the oak tree in the garden because the oak tree in the garden is saying to the why question, no, what? What Ching Yuan does is he says, no, what? And then he adds, and how? Which is to come closer. What's right here? What do you see and smell and taste and touch? What do you know now from where you are? Come closer now from where you are. Because the meaning of this is the meaning of that the thing that you're looking for. I love this koan in this moment because we're coming up on the end of the year. And I think I'm not alone in taking stock, looking at how the year went, looking at what's ahead, looking at what this chapter does to the rest of my book. Does it fit? Is the story going okay? All of that is a pulling back. All of that is a search for meaning. All of that is a way of asking why. And so the invitation here, the admonition here, when we catch ourselves doing that, is to notice what's in front of us. How our feet feel on the ground and the breeze. And the song that's stuck in our head. the hum of the heater. And to consider that that panoramic view of why is just a far away version of all these little what's. They're literally in your hand. And the closer you get, the more likely you are to see that big picture. Not by getting further away. So as you move into the, next, the new year, as you move into resolutions, as you move into all these questions about what's next and what just happened. See if you can hear Ching Yuan's voice saying, it's just like this. 
It's just like this. And that's where I'll stop.